So Marcelo asks, I have a text field multi-line in a list we've created. How can I store something like five megabytes of text in this field? <laughs> five megabytes of text? Unless you can compress it to 64K, you can't. Mm. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, Norm was nice enough to put the link in there. But uh, yeah. yeah, just under 64K. Yeah, and it, it sounds more impressive than it is. It's 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 almost 64,000 characters. I mean, you try and do the math on that to see if that's going to be 5 meg. It's, it's not really possible. So I guess I would go back to what are you trying to achieve, perhaps, uh, using the attachment feature in the list to the item might make more sense or having some other type of storage mechanism, maybe using a document library with a URL link column, uh, any of those types of things, but you may have to work around because even if you were to get five megs of data inside of that column, it might be hard to interact with. What are they doing with five megs of text in the first place? I mean, come on, really. Is it a dissertation or something? I mean... Copy and paste it into yeah. an, image, <laughs> then an image field, you know. I it mean, almost has the feel of somebody trying to, like, UU encode a small file yeah. and put it yeah. in there. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, what? yeah, what are you trying to do there? Yeah. That, like, that. that's the name column. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? It's a really long name. <laughs> well, that's, that, that, but I think it really kind of goes back to it's like if you were trying to do something that's beyond the scope of what that list was intended, you know, expand the talk with the owner of that if you're not the owner and add a new column with a new column type that's something that's relevant or, you know, what. But it, yeah, I mean, it was very specific about five megabytes of text. That is a weird. Yeah, I think an attachment makes the most sense. Yeah. Right. I wonder if it's script, like a develop. That to me sounds like a developer question. You know, they always try to push things out of the box. Yeah, just don't. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, a, again, that's like, how are you using the list if you're trying to use it for your code management? Like, wrong solution for that. It's that's like go go use DevOps. Go and use mm -hmm. your SCM platform. Don't try yeah. to use lists. Get your own free Git in. repository somewhere. Right. What it's the classic. What is SharePoint slash lists good for, and what is it not good for? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I was going to leave the other side. <laughs> is SharePoint a database? Go. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's actually a great topic uh, yeah. no it's it's actually not. people who still people not. still think that excel no, is. is a great database mm -hmm. no it, 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 it's a valid thing it's a question that keeps popping up sean in fact we have so my content team my marketing team mm -hmm. like that's on one of the the questions they, they would love a guest post on that topic because people keep asking that question or the questions around that Send and, me a note, so I'll write it for you. It's a way to correct people on like, no, it's not, and this is why. And yeah. why would people ask that? What are people attempting to do? And how do you course correct them? Yeah, I, I've had jobs I've actually turned away where it was SharePoint looking for a problem to solve. And they, they had a need for a relational database management system. And they wanted to use SharePoint to address it. It's like, no, 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 no. It mm -hmm. looks... And kind of feels like a database, but it's not. And though a list looks like a table, it's not. So I, I think where it's cool though is the citizen dev space. Like if you're building a power app, you know, you're not you're not really a developer, and you're doing this on your own. You, you need a little bit of table storage. Don't kill me, Sean. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay, SharePoint list will probably do the job. Uh. <laughs> well, so that that is a great point. That's exactly where it, it this like Sean that topic, and I think what we're like uh, why I'd like to see that blog post written is because when you talk about that uh, uh, the the citizen developer world and being able to go and build those automa automations, you know, how are you looking at how SharePoint can be used and where that data exists, and you know sometimes it is. It so it kind of looks like a database. So to put some elegance to Sean's grumble, because I, I completely agree with Sean's grumble, like a citizen developer creating a solution 
as a first cut of how to solve a business problem, sure, a SharePoint list totally works. Yeah. But if this is becoming a enterprise ready, um, mission critical application, it's time to take it out of the SharePoint list and put it into a database because the SharePoint list is going to break one day. Someone is going to go in there and delete a column and your entire solution will stop working. So exactly. two points, Jay. This, these are the Access 2.0 yeah. databases right. of right. 10, 20 years ago that became production systems. Well, that so two points. One, love, Jay, your gentle slam on Sean's <laughs> inelegant uh, responses. Um, two, uh, two is exactly that. If you go... You, you have to be careful about this. It's this is about why good having good governance around citizen development is so important is because you go and build it as much as we want to talk about graduating it up to a, a more scalable solution. We all know that you go and build that rudimentary thing, it's going to find its way into the enterprise. And so doing as much as you can to establish the standards at the beginning with how we go and build these smaller automations um, because they don't always, we don't, uh, we're not so robust in our, in our practices to then re-architect and rebuild that solution to move it up. And I would, let me point back to the history of SharePoint, where most of why SharePoint grew like weeds is because WSS was free and it was people outside of IT installing it on a box, sitting under their desk outside of the purview of IT and building solutions. And then suddenly the CEO said, I like that report. He's like, make that happen. And forced SharePoint found its way in, in a poorly architected SharePoint solution. Not that that ever happens anymore. Everything <laughs> yeah. is purposefully and elegantly architected. The cloud fixed everything. Yes. Of course it does. Yeah, we have crap that scales to unbelievable heights now. <laughs> That's a, there's a there's a great podcast title. It's like crap that scales. <laughs> I I scale cloud. <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> Cloud and Metropolitan Sewer District. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta make one last point about this whole citizen dev database thing that I think is a good direction. And it's the dataverse for teams, which being tied to teams is a whole different conversation, but that is scalable. That is something that the end user as a, as a citizen dev can just build. And then when the real devs need to get involved and scale it to the enterprise, they can upgrade it to full uh, CDS or Dataverse, whatever we're calling it these days. That if those what? citizen devs know about Dataverse. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> part of the problem. Yep. Boy, someone should right some, someone should put a link to that dataverse stuff in that spreadsheet, and then we could share it via the blog post and the oh, YouTube link. Just saying, I'm just saying, I'm not pointing at anybody. <laughs> and, and, and this you don't is put where like a giant arrow in post prod over max. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but th this uh, could also be another <laughs> lengthy discussion where it's not about what IT controls, but it's it's what IT uh, does in the way of, of guidance for citizen developers. Mm -hmm. Because a detached systems analyst is not going to understand a business process better than the person who's in the business process. So I like the example that Jay used where the user is finding a way to figure out their business problem. So how can IT, I don't know, not support, not take over, but give them that that guidance or that that guidance facilitation yeah yeah facilitation mm -hmm. to to move it into something like dataverse for teams so nearly every presentation i give in the community i have content that talks about the the role of it with microsoft 365 and it is not a tool installer anymore we are a business enabler enabler so that's exactly norm it speaks to exactly what you're talking about which is you know if you think that dataverse is how these citizen tools should be built you've got to make sure people know what it is 
You've got to make sure they know how to use it. You've got to make sure they know why, even though it's a little bit more complicated than an access database, you really should focus there and not the access database. Like if there are things you want them to do, you have to educate them on it and then you have to keep educating them on it. Like it, it can't just be here's SharePoint, it's uh, under my desk and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you in a year when I update it again. Like it, you can't do that. Well said. I'm probably the odd guy out here, you know, being the Azure person. So well, you're odd, definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>